from customers who say the company that delivers their heating gas has fallen behind. News 10 ABC's Jamie DeLine reporting tonight on feral gas and the response. Feral gas nearly two weeks ago. It was supposed to come in yesterday. She finally got the propane delivery just before 5 p.m. to the office, but the company almost inside times. We also reached out to feral gas today as well. I am sick of hearing of these feral gas stories, and I totally hear you. But the fact is, we keep getting complaints from feral gas customers. And consider this, if you are one of the around 100,000 propane customers in the capital region alone, and you run out of gas, you are in big trouble, especially with weather like this. So feral gas, it started with them um, a few years ago having issues with deliveries. Um, it was called the Polar Vortex. And they basically um, got overwhelmed with the cold weather and couldn't keep up with the demand that the consumers needed and um, were running into issues with keeping them full. And now it's just another year of being cold and the same thing happened, except it's um, you know way worse than what it was then. There's 60 customers, uh, you know, every couple of weeks that we're signing up just from Feral alone. News 10 recently receiving an email claiming Feral Gas has been behind on propane deliveries. Turns out this isn't the only complaint. I spoke to another customer who says he's fed up and is switching to a new provider. They are getting calls from customers of Feral Gases and they basically you know, want to run with the story, and I think it's a pretty unique one um, because it kind of shows uh, the difference of, you know, corporate, big corporate companies versus small family-owned companies, which is what we think uh, is the future of a lot of different industries. Why, why would this be happening to so many customers? It's really simple. I mean, it's, it's strictly capacity. If they have five trucks, they probably should have 10 trucks. Rich Kuhn, owner of First Fuel and Propane, says it's not a supply chain issue. Propane is transported by train or pipeline, and delivery companies purchase based on projected need. Kuhn says he typically buys a bit more to play it safe. Feral Gas has long grappled with bankruptcy and transportation issues. You've got to get a company that has extra capacity. Usually those companies are the family-run operations, um, not the majors. So why exactly are they doing it wrong then, that we are doing it? Uh, well, Feral, it really starts with staffing. Um, if you just hire anybody to answer a phone or to go deliver or set tanks, um, service, it's, it's a whole trickle-down effect. If you have bad, you know, employees, then it's going to make your company not, not uh, efficient and it's going to cause um, a lot of different stress points. If you just hire anybody and you're just kind of picking the phone up and not really solving issues, that's a problem. Right. You know, where we right. pick it up and we solve issues right. right away. And if you guys have to take the time and the resources and the trucks and the person yeah, we have to, to, to fill yeah. up feral yeah. gas, right. your customer would fall behind and there would yeah. be a cascading yeah. failure. Went to feral gas's Johnstown location to find out what's going on now. Hello? Hello? Just to re-level it again because of how uneven the ground is and how I use some sand. So it worked. I mean, you're level and it doesn't stop. Me and my brother are both fully capable of doing deliveries and tank sets and gas checks and service. So um, if need be, uh, we will hop in the truck and take care of whatever has to be done um, throughout the day with emergencies. And that goes not just for like leaks, but emergency tank sets for people that are out of gas. So I would say it starts with your employees. First Fuel and Propane is one of many other Capital Region providers being called by former feral gas customers. In the past, you know, probably a couple of weeks, I would say 20 to 30 feral gas customers. Yeah, another thing would be um, having the proper equipment for situations like this when 
Um, you know, when it's warm out, it's not a big deal. You have trucks and, and people, but when it gets cold, you want to be a little bit overstaffed. So that way um, you can take care of the, the influx in business that comes in um, this time of year. So trucks, equipment, um, people, and uh, honestly supplier's as well, making sure you have the right suppliers to supply you with what you need um, during the crazy times, not just the good times. A former feral gas driver did tell us that the company just doesn't have enough drivers. And customers who rent the tanks, those are the ones in the biggest trouble. 25 to 80 percent of the new customers are coming from feral gas. They are helping out or signing on customers who are with other national propane companies, but it's mostly with uh, customers from feral gas. When people call First Fuel and Propane for help, the owner says they usually sound frustrated and angry because they don't have any gas in their house. Basically, how I think of it is. Um, and my dad says the same thing. What would you do if, you know, your grandmother or your mother or a family member was in the situation that a lot of these feral gas customers were in? You know, you'd want to take care of them um, and do whatever is necessary to, whether it's going out and filling them up or, um, you know, replacing a regulator if it's froze or um, just answering the phone um, is a huge thing. People want to hear a voice and hear somebody that uh, cares about their situation.